I made switch from mainframe support to a data engineering role in a top bank. Within a year, tripled my salary from 9 LPA to 30 LPA. This video is for the people like just like me who are in outdated technologies or non-tech roles or the freshers who are trying to switch into the data engineering. When I was starting out, I followed dozens of roadmaps that is available. But unfortunately, none of them work for me. I built my own roadmap during my preparation and this roadmap helped me in getting a job, not only a single but multiple jobs. I am 100% sure if you follow each and every step of this roadmap, you will definitely get a good data engineering job. Starting with basic but very important tips. First, to set mindset that you don't want to be an expert in data engineering but just to learn enough skills so that you can crack the data engineering jobs. I see people keep doing courses just to be an expert in data engineering and then they think that I will uh, start giving interviews and then I will crack the job. You need enough skills and interviewing skills as well to crack the data engineering interviews. That's it. Don't try to be an expert and then think that I will give interview and crack the uh, data engineering jobs. Second thing, most of the people don't have the clear deadline that after three months I will be into a data engineering job or after six months I will be in data engineering job. They keep postponing their goals month-wise, week-wise. So right now, post and comment below the exact date you will get your data engineering job. Then come back to this video when you do and let's celebrate together. The third tip is dedicate two hours daily. Every morning, every night, decide yourself but be very consistent for at least next three to six months. Before you start preparing for data engineering interviews, it is very important to understand what is the structure of interviews. It is just like when you start preparing for any exam, you know what is this exam look like and how to prepare for this exam. While the exact interview process can vary from company to company, but 80% of the companies have the same process for the data engineering interviews. The L1 round, which is known as technical screening route, it lasts for 30 to 45 minutes it generally focuses on three main areas, SQL, Python, and the Spark. In SQL, they're going to ask you the theory questions and one to two problems to solve. The SQL problems can be of median level or the high level. The second thing is Python. They're going to ask you the basic Python questions in the theory. Also, they're going to give you the coding question. The coding question won't be difficult. It will be on the array or the string. Here my advice is we are preparing for DE role, not for the SGE role. So my request is don't spend too much time in preparing for DSA medium or hard questions. DSA easy question is the maximum that uh, interviewer going to ask you for the DE role. The third thing is the Spark. They're going to ask you the uh, question around Spark theory that is around this architecture optimization and all. And sometimes they can ask you to write very basic code of Spark. After clearing the L1 round, there will be the L2 round, which is a deep dive into the data engineering and it can last up to 60 to 75 minutes. Optimization of Spark jobs, how you have created the Airflow Dex, data warehousing concept and all other data engineering technologies that you have mentioned in the resume. This is the most difficult part of uh, a data engineering interview process. But when you have enough experience, you will start cracking these interviews as well. After this, there will be L3, which is a managerial round. That is around 30 to 45 minutes. Again, this round is about a project. The manager will ask you question related to project and also some situational best question on the teams. How you have managed the teams, how you have communicated the team. It is easy to break, but it requires some practice. After all this technical round, there is a last round, which is the HR round. You know, that is a very easy round, salary negotiations and uh, location constraint and everything else. I will be releasing a very detailed video on how to tackle each of these rounds. But for now, you should know the structure of data engineering interviews. So let's start what you need to learn. You start with the fundamentals. So there is very famous book called Fundamentals of Data Engineering. Everyone in the data engineering space uh, gives you guidance that you should read this book. I know this book is very long, 450 pages, and it is almost impractical to read this book. Instead of reading the entire book, watch the data engineering course on the Coursera. This course is basically a video version of book and it is taught by one of the actual authors of fundamentals of data engineering. That means you are learning directly from the source in much easier to digest format. Don't try to finish this course. Uh, try to run this course in parallel for the next three months. Bread and butter of data engineer, the SQL. You should spend at least a month to gain enough knowledge of SQL. What I have done during my preparation is I have divided divided the uh, SQL in two parts mainly, the theory and the problem solving. For the theory, I will recommend go to a Udemy course 
or any YouTube course. But I think on YouTube there is not enough depth uh, considering the topics that asked in the interview. Go to the Udemy. There will be enough content. Once you are done with the course, ask GPT or use my share document in the Telegram community to list down all the major SQL topics. So here you see, I have taken out all the topics, and uh, I tried to fill every detail whatever I know. I watched the videos from for the SQL. Once I have completed the SQL videos, I filled every information that I know about the topics. I've just collected the topics and written everything whatever I know about that particular topic. See, this is very long document, but this document have given me enough confidence, and I was able to answer hundred percent of question related to the SQL. The same way, you can also collect this. Uh, topics and start writing whatever you have learned related to this topic. This will help you in gaining the confidence, and you will be able to break at least equal interviews. This helps you in identifying your strong and weak areas, fill gaps in your understanding, and build real confidence. For the coding practice, uh, I will recommend going to Lit Code and solving the top 50 SQL problems. Although I have done almost all the SQL problems which is free available on the Lit Code, but I don't think. That much of problem solving required. If you do just 50 problems from the lead code, that will be enough. But make sure you do not stop once you have done the 50 question. Do a single question daily till you get the job because SQL is something which can be make or break for your interviews. The second most important skill is the Python. But you don't need to be an expert in Python. You should know enough about Python. But don't try to be a Python developer. We as a data engineer are going to write the Python scripts. We do not going to write the classes and objects and all. But having the knowledge of class and object is good. But don't be spending much of the time on the understanding advanced concept. The basic concept will be enough. I have learned with the help of uh, 100 days challenge from the uh, code with Harry. You can do the same. Do not spend much time on practicing the DSA. Focus on having enough knowledge about array and strings. I would suggest to practice the basic portion from the lead code. The step four is the Spark, the elephant in the room. So Spark actually is easy to learn, but it is new for us, which takes time. So spend at least a month for the Spark as well. So you will spend one month for the SQL, around a month for the Python, and around a month for the Spark. In Spark, you will again divide the things into two parts, theory and the coding. In theory, you will try to understand the architecture, what are the optimization techniques, how Spark run internally, everything related to Spark you are going to learn. After that, you will start learning the syntax, how to write the Spark codes. And the same way that we have done for the SQL, we are going to collect all the topics into a single file and try to fill all this by ourselves. I have done same thing of SQL with the Spark. I have taken out all the topics and I try to write everything that I know about that topic. It gave me the enough confidence in the Spark as well. And I was able to answer each and every question related to Spark. I made a big document. It took me some time. But once I was done with writing each and everything, I was able to answer every question in the interview. You should do the same. I will try to share the uh, topics of Spark as well as the topic of SQL in our Telegram community. You can start filling that after once you have completed the Spark course from Udemy or anywhere else. With this, we will get to know that what are the topics uh, we are confident and what are the topics in which we are lacking. You can use the Prashant Sir's Udemy course uh, for learning the Spark and another data savvy as a channel, which is actually very good uh, in the terms of uh, Spark. The step five is start reading the articles. Search for the articles like how Uber has solved its data problem, how Amazon have done that, how Netflix have done this. What th this will help you in uh, discussion in the L2 and the L3 rounds. You will get to know how the real data engineering problems are solved in the big companies. And when there is a discussion going on in L2 and L3 round, you will be giving a very practical and solid answers to the interviewer. This should be a parallel process. Uh, you should read an article in a week or two so that uh, you will get to know uh, more about the data engineering. I will be sharing this article in my Telegram group. Uh, if you are not there, join that. Uh, else you can search in the Google and uh, read there. So this was your foundation layer and this is over. Now you will start giving interviews. I know you will say this is too early to give interviews. We don't know other technologies like Airflow or data warehousing or cloud. But it doesn't matter. For the L1 rounds, you have enough knowledge. Preparing the isolation won't work. 
I will say you straightforwardly. For my case also, I started giving interview after ha having enough knowledge into SQL, Python and SPA and I was able to crack the L1 round at least. While giving the interviews, you will also start learning how to drive the interview and once you have given the interview, list down all the interview questions. I have done the same. Whenever I am coming from my interview, I have listed down each and every question that was there in the L1 round. I started creating the L1 rounds. For the L2 and L3, learn parallelly the technologies and the uh, project building. Step 6 is the learning the airflow or any other kind of orchestration tool. But problem with the airflow is there is very less content uh, available. But there is one good course available in the Udemy. I will recommend that. I also tell you that uh, setting up the airflow in the local is tedious job. But spend one day or two day to doing that. Once you have the environment created, it is easy to write the airflow decks. Also, there will be not much question on the airflow particularly, but airflow should be there in your resume. Step 7 is understanding the data warehousing concepts. So you should know what is facts, what is dimensions, what is star schema, what is snowflake schema, what, what is slowly changing dimensions, what is data modeling. All the basic things about data warehousing you should know. You should also know the architecture of BigQuery, um, Redshift, Snowflake or any other data warehouses. Step 8 is to pick a cloud. You can pick AWS, GCP or Azure, any of your choice. I will recommend AWS because it is a market leader and many companies want AWS data engineers. Make an AWS free account and start exploring the services which is related to data engineering like Glue, Lambda, S3, Redshift, Athena, this type of services. You will get a, a practical exposure as well you know how these cloud technologies work. This is similar to GCP and the Azure. Once you have learned all this technology, it's a high time to make a real-time project. Pick any kind of problem and try to solve with the help of all the tools that you have learned during your preparation. The project should be so real that you can write this to your resume. This project should be interested enough so that interviewer can discuss this project with you in L2 or L3 rounds. And you should able to answer each and every question related to your project to him. So this is the part one of the roadmap. In part two of my video, I will be sharing the step 10, which is the resume building. Step 11, how to show experience to HR. Step 12, how to get calls from Nokri.com. Step 13, which company to target initially. Step 14, how to tell your project as a real project in the interview. Step 15, interview breaking tips. Step 16, how to revise. Step 17, mock interview with the chat GPT. And step 18, after cracking the job, how to excel in the job. So stay tuned, keep following data with Pranjal.